Welcome to the Jazz Piano School podcast, where we have one mission, that is to help as many interested people around the world learn and improve at Jazz Piano by providing structured and organized jazz piano education. My name is Brendan Lowe. This is going to be episode number 114. I'm going to talk about the seven most important elements of solo piano that you can start to improve today to drastically see results in your solo piano playing. Now, if you're new to Jazz Piano School, go to jazzpianoschool.com to uh, check out all of our free resources. We have a uh, lick of the day. We have a blog. We have over 100 podcasts, so many free resources to help you learn jazz piano. And obviously, we have our membership options that you can check out as well. So, as well, go to, uh, I'm trying to remember, jazzpianoschool.com forward slash podcast 114. You'll get the practice uh, sheet and elements for this episode. And with that being said, guys, let's dive right in. So the top seven things, right? When we think about solo piano, so many people ask me like, oh man, like how do I improve my solo piano? There's so many different things you can do, but these are going to be the top seven ways or things that I hear in the average person's playing that can immediately start to improve their playing. Now, so many people have play solo piano and there's a lot of different things lacking, right? The first one that I hear is going to be the rhythmic content or the way you're approaching your solo piano uh, style, okay? Now, this is different than stylistic elements, which I'll get into in a second. Now, I'm gonna take the piece day by day. If I were to play day by day and I were to play it like uh, this, let's say, I had to move my chord out of the way of my pedal. Right? This is a stride style, okay? And rhythmically, there's not much going on, right, when I'm doing that. So, you know, we're looking for, a lot of people ask me, like, why I'm playing this, but it doesn't sound like what it does on the album, right? All of us really essentially just want to be able to self-express ourselves freely, uh, you know, s- through some sort of like source, an album or a record that we hear that we relate to, you know, like I related to like Oscar Peterson's playing a lot when I was growing up. Um, and I want to, and then I obviously I moved on, but some people just love what they just want to sound like Wynton Kelly. They want to sound like Herbie. They want to sound like, uh, Errol Garner, you know, all these old or, you know, even older pianists, Bud Powell. Right. So the rhythmic content here <laughs> Right, that's just a stride style. So what we need to do is change that up, you know? And how do we do that, actually? We need to add different durations of rhythm into our playing, okay? And there's certain elements that can do that. We can do that through bass notes. Right, now, did you see where I placed my second bass note? I went... It was right on the upbeat, right? One, two, three, four, one, and... Okay, so my my rhythmic concepts and durations are going to have a drastic effect on the way that my solo piano sounds. Now, that's just through one component. That's just through bass notes, right? I can completely change the rhythmic content of my bass notes, place them on upbeats, place them on downbeats, use more, use less, use walking. It's just a whole world I can go to just with bass notes, right? You know, whatever it may be. I mean, you can get so far into it. But the thing I want you to know is that if you have a consistent kind of rhythmic pattern going, it, it's most likely going to be like more of a stride feeling or a ragtime feeling. And if that's not what you want, you need to change the rhythmic uh, durations and content of your playing. And that's more of a stylistic thing I'm going to get into in a second. But again, we can do this with chords. <laughs> There needs to be contrast and variation in your rhythm when playing. It can't be this. That's stride, right? When you have a repetitive thing just happening, it's like ragtime and stride, okay? So the best way that I recommend you doing this or changing this, obviously, is with different elements. You can pick different elements, like I just did the bass note. You can pick chords to change up the rhythms. You can just practice shells of the chords and, and practice playing copping rhythms to instead of doing this. 
right? Or instead of doing this, right place them on all down beats, right? You you want to switch them up. But the broken stride method is really the the uh, you know quintessential solo piano method that I uh, really encourage the people people, which is a broken stride where you play bass notes going to chords, but you're not playing boom cha boom cha. It's broken, so you play them however you want, right? So you may play a bass note, you may wait, play another bass note, and then a chord. Right, so it's all random, but do it very, very slowly. So you'd have this. Okay, I'm doing some other stuff we're going to get to in a second, but that is the broken stride method. I'd highly recommend you approach that, right? Just try your left hand. Right? Just switching it up. Switching it up so you have random, it's it's not random, but it's like, you know, it's contrasting, contrasting rhythms and variations. That's going to create a more modern swing sound. And again, obviously, we're just talking about medium swing styles, but everything up from a ballad, like be, beyond 120 is going to be essentially the same approach to solo piano. Okay, so number one is you have to change your rhythmic variation in the different elements, like besides playing the melody and your improv in your left hand, I should have said that specifically, but mainly it's gonna be your left hand has to change its rhythmic variation on its support, okay, number one. Number two is gonna be your right hand harmonizations. Now, as you notice, I started to add in some different things. I started to do, um, right, we need to harmonize our right hand melody as it's going through. Now, we don't have to do this when we're soloing. You know, however you want to do it, uh, you don't have to harmonize this, the your improv, right? But as you're playing tunes and things like that, it's essential to harmonize your melody as you go through to create a thicker sound uh, when we're playing, right? Right. So instead of just this, we could do this, right? However you want to do it, this, right? We can do this. Now, again, it's like, oh, how do I do that, Brendan, right? What? How do I make these sounds? You know, well, there's a long process to that. But first, the easiest way is to take the shells below the melody and just place place the shells. Sorry, I heard a siren. Place the shells below the melody. So as my, I'm playing an A minor 7 chord. I have my root in the, in the bass here. And I'm playing my shells. And then I just go on to play the melody. Now, if I if I can't play the shells with my um, right hand, I'll just have my left hand fill in, and I'll take a shell with one other finger, right? See how I do this? So I'm playing the shells here, and it's divided by both hands. See that? So what I'm doing here is, again, the F sharp is a shell. I don't even need to add this one in. I can just do this here. And again, when I hit my D, I'm filling in with my shells. I added a nine there though, okay? But we have to harmonize the melody. You have to harmonize the melody with your right hand as you're playing. Right, you hear this? Otherwise, it's gonna sound thin and it's gonna sound bland. And what happens is, is when you're harmonizing with your left hand, it sounds muddy like this. Right, we want to get away from that. Our left hand is really going to only be meant to play the bass notes, the shells, and maybe add in one other extension. It's not meant to play full root position chords. Like obviously, uh, when it does support, it's going to jump up and play chords, but it should never be playing full root position chords or kind of like inversions down in this area. And I see so many people do that. So we need to harmonize. So the first way to do it is to put the shells underneath. Now, after we have the shells, right, we can start to add other notes. We can add the five. We can add extensions like a, the 11. I'm not going to go into this too much right now. but And we can create nice voicings out of that. And as long as we have the bass note, and I'll talk about that in a second, the shells and the melody, we're good. But we want to thicken that up. 
Now the other thing I'm gonna talk about is we don't always have to harmonize right on top of the beat, right? If I do this. See how I'm harmonizing after the fact, after I played the melody? It doesn't always have to be right with the melody, but that is that is a good thing to do. Um, so again, if we come to the B minor seven and measure seven, right here are my shells here, and again you can add the nine in here, right? Going to here thirteen if you want flat thirteen. You can move the uh, to the flat nine up here if you want. You know whatever it is. Here's your low D on the first melody note. Where do we want to harmonize? Most of the time we want to pick uh, places that hold in the melody or the beginnings of each measure. So on system three, right, so you see that? So I harmonize here. So I'm putting my shells when, again, as the melody gets lower, you're gonna be able to do less because it's gonna get muddier. So you wanna just use your shells. Here's just my shells. Now the melody in the next beat happens to be a C, so all I do is lift up my note and just play it again. Harmonize here. And then harmonize. Here's a nice hold. And then I get a harmonizing. Harmonize. Harmonize. Right, you hear that? So if I do it a little slower, and I'll take it from the second system. Uh, sorry. I'm not swinging the melody or anything. I'm just playing all straight quarter notes. Right? Whoops. <laughs> So that we, we need to harmonize the melody, right? Have to do that. That's going to be number two. Now, comping and fills is going to be number three. Okay. And what we need to do that is, again, is fill in the space and comp. We need to comp for ourselves to give it some rhythmic oomph, some rhythmic swing, some fullness, and make it sound like we're a band. And where are we going to do that? Mainly in the space. Okay. So it's not going to be during the melody, right? Because we need to play the melody, but Anytime we have space or a quick little uh, half note, right, dotted quarter, maybe, right, so even on this first chord note, I can get in like one little comp. And the way we do this is because if we have a lot of melody to continue with, what we're going to do is play the melody with our pinky. This, this stuff is so great, guys. Like, I hope, pay attention real closely here because this will completely change your playing. Play the melody, then you're going to comp with your other fingers. So you're actually getting both components merged into one very quickly. And that sound is going to really thicken up and bring fullness to everything that you're playing. Right? So you see what I'm doing? I'm comping with my other fingers, then I just quickly switch to play the melody. Right? You see that? So I'm playing my melody. I'm going E minor to D7, and then I'm just going to jump up and play the melody. Right? So I, I play the melody, right? And then I just comp with my other finger. Sorry, I was, uh, I was thinking while I was trying to speak to you guys. <laughs> That's why I had a little pause there. And again, so obviously when you have dotted quarter notes, you don't have that much time to do that. So you're going to make these little quick adjustments, right? And then besides that, when you have huge holds, like um, half notes are definitely a good place, like dotted half notes, whole notes, okay? Like on the second measure, excuse me, um, second system, right? do whatever you want. Now, again, a lot of this, uh, the comping elements very closely integrate into your reharm strategies and your reharm methods. That's why the, if you guys are members of jazz piano school, you, the reharm upgrade formulas and the reharm in um, the main curriculum are going to be super important. Now, if I were just to comp this two, five, one, it, 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 it would work, right? I would just have to use rhythms on the B minor going to E. 
so it's a full two measures of a two five, right? So we have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now, in order to make it interesting, instead of just doing this, one, two, three, four, one, that's boring, right? We can't just use whole notes. We need to use rhythms. So we could do this. Again, we're playing our melody and then comping with the rest of our fingers to create some rhythmic variation. Okay, and I'm just switching from my left hand, but my bass notes. I can move my bass a little bit more to create some rhythmic, rhythmic uh, variation. Right, I might do that. You know, some sort of movement with your left hand. That, that will help, but again, reharms are going to be very, very, very useful in this situation. So instead of just going B minor to E, I can comp B minor, I can go to my tritone, sus, resolve, sorry, yeah, I could resolve, or I could go sus. So what I did there is I went B minor, tritone, sus, resolution, flat nine if you want, or regular. Okay, back down to your finally your E sus and then resolution. Okay, does that make sense? So B minor, F sus, resolving to F7. Right? If you want to put extensions in there, you can. E sus, resolving to E alter. Okay? So a lot of different ways you can do this. I mean, I could go. With the movements that the reharms are going to give you, I'm not going to go into reharms too much, but those are going to give you so many opportunities to comp and fill in space when you're playing solo piano. So it's crucial you learn your reharm movements. But anyway. Now, passing fills, right? So again, when we have the E minor, just it's just staying on E minor with two melody notes, right? What do we do there? Uh, passing chords are fantastic, especially on minor. Drop two, uh, working with your passing diminished is very, very common, right? Or, sorry. Um, and you can do that however you want, right? But again, this is, again, this goes into different types of passing movements. So, uh, using your minor here and moving up, uh, with your diminished, here's my, here's my, uh, diminished chord, diminished. Right, diminished, and it could be again with your rootless voicing or without your rootless voicing. Here's here's a, just a common uh, third inversion, right? Drop two. Okay, so you're switching between your minor and your uh, passing diminished for your fills. Okay, now your fills don't have to be comping all the time. It could be a uh, solo, right? So you could play, you know, whatever it may be and then go back to the melody. Right? Whatever it is. So just take advantage of the opportunity to comp for yourself and put in fills, however it may be. It can be with your left hand bass notes, right? Comps, two hand comps. Take advantage of the opportunities to put in those fills, all right? The, excuse me, the fourth one is going to be bass notes. So many times I hear people play up here, right? They don't add in any bass notes. I don't know why. The bass notes are the bass notes are intended for support and thickness since the bottom foundation. It's like it's like building a house without having a foundation, right? So if I were to just play this piece, listen to how it sounds. Sorry, it's hard for me to play like this. Right, you hear how high and thin it is? We need these bass notes. And again, once I teach people this, they're like, well, how do we add in the bass notes and chords? That's where the broken stride method comes in or some of our one and sevens or our one, seven, threes, okay? Or jumping to shells, right? Bass note to shells. These are, guys, these are all left-hand solo piano components that I teach in jazz piano school. Again, so if you're a member, uh, check out that upgrade formula or in the main curriculum, okay? So your left-hand solo piano components are going to give you bass notes plus the shells in different various combinations, right? So, but you need to always have bass notes. You need bass notes, even if this is gonna go off camera here. But these bass notes down here are great. I mean, I could even just swing the melody with this.
you know, that's the, I love that sound. Just, I mean, I couldn't stop playing. It was like the, the low end, it's the low end Oscar bass note sound. I, I rarely hear anyone do that. It's just a fantastic sound. Just using that rich, rich, rich low end style of the piano. <laughs> And it's even better when you're not walking bass. Like when you're not walking full bass, you're kind of playing in more of a two style, right? So you definitely need bass notes in. And again, if you're harmonizing, right? Hit your bass note and then jump to your shells. And again, if you can't make the jump quick enough, this is what your right hand is for. You do it in the space, right? Right, you see that? I'm playing my bass note and my shells here underneath my melody. bass notes down here I'm using hear how thick the sound is so if you're if your sound sounds thin right it's because you're not using bass notes you got to get those bass notes in there somehow you always need your bass notes and shells somehow in the equation no matter what you're playing even if I was playing this as a ballad you hear how thick and rich that sounds with my bass note whereas opposed if I did this Right? It doesn't have that low end sound. You need those bass notes. All right. Number five is going to be left hand extensions and voicings. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. Okay. Wanted to make sure I had, I counted off. All right. Left hand extensions and voicings. Okay. So many people are using just inversions, right? Of the chord. You got to have, you got to have some colors. You got to have some colors in your voicings. Okay. And so many people, and this is, I understand. I'm just, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm not picking on you, but I'm just saying, I understand the progression because this is exactly what I did. I mean, I know the progression to a T of, um, improvement. That's why I have such a structured and organized manner of helping people because I mean, I just know it like the back of my hand. Cause I went through it. I went through the same thing. So when we progress, we start by using inversions of the chord, but eventually you need to learn your rootless voicings. And if you haven't done that, you just, you know it. It's like, you know, you don't know your rootless voicings. You got to learn your rootless voicings first. Okay. That way you'll have some colors in your voicings. The other thing you need to know is uh, different types of extensions on your dominant chords, right? So you can go altered flat nine, right? Maybe natural 13 with your flat nine right? Maybe sharp nine, natural 13, right? This is getting a little out there. Maybe sharp 11, you know, stuff like this. These types of colors are really going to change your solo piano sound. And again, instead of just doing this, right? Maybe you do this. You hear the difference there? Like I played, I'm going to play one chord differently and it completely changes the sound of my playing. Instead of doing this, a regular rootless voicing. And I do this. Like that is, I mean, if that's not a great example of how one voicing can sh completely overhaul your sound, I, I don't know what it is. Like, right? So you, I could add the 11 in here too. Like that's so, I love that voicing too. I use that all the time. I mean, it, soloing, right? So we got nine, three, 11, seven. Whoops, right? Nine, so we have this cluster here. That was your C minor, right? So here's A minor, C minor, right? And again, I would just practice these. So the great thing about this is we have this, uh, this little half step rub here, right? Half step. And again, using these types of interesting voicings are gonna completely change your sound, right? So if instead of, again, sharp 11 on the G major, right? You can use sharp 11 on the C7. Like these types of three note voicings or even flat nine. Now, is it going to kind of take away from the mood of this like traditional standard? Absolutely. I mean, it's going to make it, give it a more modern sound. That may not be what you're looking for, but again, even with some of the more elegant uh, styles that you're looking for, those 
you're going to need to add in some different types of voicings besides just your inversions. If anything, learn your rootless voicings and put those in there, okay? So you got to kind of switch up your colors, put some more colors into your left hand and switch up your voicings, all right? Number six is going to be your right hand and left hand two hand harmonization. So this deals with the seven step process I've created to harmonizing melodies. Okay. And so basically when you have a melody note, you want to pick a bass note and then fill in the rest, uh, depending upon the space you have. And again, this is a seven step process that I teach. So once we pick our melody or excuse me, once we know the melody, once we have the bass note, then we're going to, we need the shells in there somehow. So we determine how much space we have. And in this case, we have a lot of space. So it's a nice even breakdown. So I can play the seven here. I can take the third with my thumb. So now I have a nice balanced sound. I have the bass note, the shells, and the melody. That's really all I need, okay? But what I can do here is fill in the space, you know, however I want from then on out because I have the necessary structure. Okay, this is a process, guys. It's not a guessing game. I want you guys to know that. Everyone watching on YouTube right now, everyone listening on the podcast, this is not a guessing game at harmonizing, right? I think so many people approach the piano as like, well, I got to guess at where my hands go. No. It's like the method I teach, I want you to know the exact steps and process you take to create the rich sound you're looking for that you hear on albums, okay? And it's not me showing you how to do it like, here, guys, you can play this voicing right here. Like, you can play this A minor voicing over a, any A minor chord that has a B in the melody. And you're like, cool, okay, how many chords have the A minor 7 with a B in the melody? Well, there's one here, there's one here. The question you need to answer is how can I do this on my own wherever and whenever I want. That achieves complete freedom. That's my interest in teaching you, okay? You know, unlike some of the, you know, uh, other types of videos you'll see, it's going to show you the chord and you'll be like, cool, I'm gonna look for all the places I can use this chord with the B and the melody. And you'll be like, oh man, not too many things. I still don't really know why I'm doing this. <laughs> and again, I know this so well because I went through it, right? Anyway, so here's the process. You take your bass note, take your melody, okay? You have to fill in your shells after this, however that may be. So the closest setup right here is now one and seven. I'm gonna play my seven. I'm gonna fill in my last remaining shell with my right hand because obviously my left hand cannot play it, right? So now I have this. Now I'm free to fill in whatever I want. I can fill in it with extensions. I can do this. I can add in the 13. I can add in the five. I can add in both. Right? I can add in the nine down here if I want. Again, I can double the melody. I can put the 11 in. I can even take the nine with my left hand if I want. Add in the five and the, and the 13. Now, again, I, I've been, I don't know if you've been listening, but I've been checking out a lot of Jacob Collier's um, voicings and things like that. And he does, he has amazing, rich voicings stacked, like these really thick stacks. And this is exactly how you do it on the piano. I just want to let you guys know that. You need to transfer your left hand fingers, make use of all of your fingers in your hand. Now, obviously, he's using voices so he can move them quickly because he's recording all his voices. He's not playing. But even on the piano, he's, he's got some really rich, lush voicings. Now, you can move this pretty quickly into other things, like very quickly. But this is how you take a process of arranging your two hands in any type of situation. Right? So, regarding this tune, this is the first melody note. Now here, I want to harmonize this note. So I have my melody. Um, I have two bass note options. I can play this, this, well, three, really. This, this, or this. Now this doesn't give me enough room to really harmonize. It's going to sound kind of bland if I do it here. It doesn't give me much room. You want to have a nice balanced spread. So I'm going to pick this bass note or this bass note. If I pick this bass note down here off the camera, I don't have an uh, option, really. I could do this with my left hand which I'm playing one in 10. I'm playing a 10th in my left hand. That doesn't sound good. It's too muddy. So I have to play everything in my right hand if I choose that bass note. So I have to do something like this. Does that make sense? When I play super low on bass notes, I can only harmonize with my right hand. Whereas if I play this, I could do this. You know, I could add the sharp 11 in here maybe. Right? And even so, I don't have to use both my hands there. I can take that same voicing with my right hand, then I can play the nine with my left hand here. I could play sus to that, or I could play the 13, right? So we have this. 
You hear how that changes? I mean, that's a it's a completely different sound than doing this. Right? So we have this. <laughs> I love it, right? I could add the 5 in here. Okay? I could put the 13 in here with the 7. Ooh, I love that. That was a big change. So we have the 9 in here. Th sharp 11, 13, 7, 9. Oh, that's a beautiful voicing right there, guys. Look at that. I'm using all five fingers with my right hand. One, five, nine, three, sharp 11, 13, seven, melody. And I came to that result. I can recreate that anytime I want, wherever I want, by using the seven step arranging process, solo piano process that I've created you know, inside jazz piano school that I'm teaching you right now. I'm teaching you the process, right? So this is how you start to learn the steps and structures and core tools to actually creating freedom freedom in jazz piano and self-expressing yourself and creating happiness, right? Rather than copying and only be able to use these certain elements like over in one area, like cookie cutter. You know, you don't want the cookie cutter method. That that equated to failure for me in jazz piano school. It never gave me what I wanted. So number six was not in jazz piano school, in jazz piano. I think I said jazz piano school. In number six is your right hand plus two left hand combinations, harmonizations. So you'd think I'm on coffee. I'm drinking lots of coffee right now. I haven't actually. This is just how I am. <laughs> but I'm going to go get coffee after this. All right. I know you're probably like, this guy's crazy. All right. So stylist number seven is going to be stylistic elements for tune. Now, day by day, okay, is a medium swing traditional tune, right? So if you're playing, um, you know, you however you want to play this, you can. I, I, I'm not sure what I want to try and say here, but it's just like, if you're going to play a medium swing, that's kind of like a more modern-y tune, you need to play in that um, example, right? If you're playing solar, you don't want to play solar like this. Um, you know, you could. But, I mean, that's just not how... I mean, solar is the modern type of modal, uh, like, you know... You know, it's got extensions, it's got fourths, it's got these modal type. You want to play style, you want to put in stylistic elements to the tune you're working on. And the only way to do that is to know the different types of stylistic elements. So that's kind of a catch-22 because it's like, all right, Brandon, well, teach me the stylistic elements. So I can't do that all in this episode. But I guess what I'm trying to say is... If you're playing a tune, you know, like... If you're playing eight misbehaving or if you're playing any sort of like you know that works really well for the stride style day by day uh you can definitely play stride you know but you you may want you want to kind of morph your tune into what it should sound like you know it may sound better in that way and again i'm trying to use i used the example of solar before um uh, because to to kind of break out of the box again, if you're doing like impressions or giant steps, you're not going to play giant step stride, right? But you just want to be, you want to have stylistic elements per tune, you know. And I think as number seven of the most important things I hear, I hear people play non-stylist. What I'm trying to say is, I hear solo pianos uh, students play non-stylistic elements over tune. Like so, for example, over. Um, over giant steps, they'd be playing that stride, right? Or with a raggy feel, right? And you need to be conscious of that, you know, when you're playing your tunes. Like if you're playing Misty, um, you know, Misty is not really a ragtime tune or thing like that. It was written by Errol Garner, but, you know, but, you know, you, you want to try and really study the, the elements of the tune. You know, so that you can have the those types of elements. And, and by knowing that, like by knowing the stylistic elements for each tune, you're going to be really able to dive in deeper to those things. So like what actually makes a tune sound the way it does? That's what you need to know. I guess this last one was was less of a teaching concept on the piano. It was more of like a mindset kind of um, idea that you need to have when you go into a tune, right? You need to kind of know and feel the style. Like if you're doing a Latin tune, you need to add in Latin elements. I know it sounds like, oh, like, duh, Brendan, okay. But like, I, it's just, it's amazing how many, uh, you know, 
I'm trying to, I'm flipping through some tunes here to see if I can get some more examples, but it's amazing how many people just don't do that, right? Um, if you're, if you're playing detour ahead, right? This is, this is made famous by Bill Evans, right? I mean, this tune in itself lends itself to, uh, more of that modern Bill Evansy style. But again, I wouldn't play this as like a traditional ballad. Um, I don't even know what that would sound like. You know, so you, you just want to approach the tunes as they're written, as they're intended to be. And that way you're going to get the most out of them and you're going to make them sound the best, right? As the writer intended them to be. Now, I'm not saying... Okay, and you're like, oh, Brendan, I can't change the tunes. I'm not saying that at all. Okay, you can absolutely change them. You can arrange them however you want, but just keep that in mind. You know, this is more for the beginners, intermediate players um, that are coming up and, you know, still kind of sticking to what they know. Like, try and break out of your box. Like, add some new things. Add the stylistic elements into the tune that you... Um, are working on. All right. So that's it. Just to rehash what we talked about. We talked about rhythm. Okay. Right. Different types of rhythm. Don't just chunk it out all the time. You know, add the different types of rhythms in with your left hand, your right hand, broken stride together, your right hand harmonizations, right? Make sure you harmonize the melodies with your right hand underneath the melody. Okay. Copying and fills. Always take advantage of areas to cop and fill. Always. All right, that's way you. That's how you're gonna make your solo piano sound like a full band. Bass notes. You need your bass notes. You know, you have to have that rich low end sound. Otherwise, your playing is gonna sound empty. You don't want it to sound empty. Number five is left hand extensions and voicings. You gotta get some new extensions going. Right. All these different types of things. However, it may be that's just a regular alter chord. But whatever you uh, are, your skill level is up to, start to break out of the box. Don't just use rootless voicings. Kind of add some different types of voicings in there, however it may be. Some different formations, right? You can try all different sorts of things here. Whatever that may look like for you. Number six is going to be right hand, left hand, two hand harmonizations. Use the seven step process that we kind of talked about. I didn't go into full detail. I think it's in one of the other previous podcast episodes to work through your two hand harmonizations, right? Melody note, bass note, find your seventh and three, add in your five possibly, then start to add in extensions. You can remove your five, you can start to add in other extensions. You can even take your other fingers of your left hand, you can start to add in things there so they can help. That will free up more fingers for your right hand, guys. It's a process, remember that. You're not copying voicings, you're learning how to build freedom. You're learning freedom, okay? That is the Jazz Piano School way. Number seven is your stylistic elements. Make sure you're adding stylistic elements into the tune that relate to the tune. Again, you can arrange the tune. If I were to place Honeysuckle Rose, Honeysuckle Rose. Oh, sorry. I just had the other tune in my head. You know, if I did it like that, that'd be my arrangement, right? But, you know, you just want to be conscious of the fact that you're creating arrangement. Don't unconsciously do that. I guess that's what I'm really trying to say is if you're doing this and you're not unconscious of the way that that's completely um, set aside from actually how the tune kind of was written, then that's a problem, right? So that's the seven things, guys. Thank you so much again. Uh, I hope hope this helped, uh, this, the solo piano uh, thing. Again, go to jazzpianoschool.com forward slash podcast 114 to get these elements um, kind of more in a practice broken down practice sheet music material type of way that way you can kind of work them out um, yourselves um, again guys thank you so much as always go to jazzpianoschool.com and check us out see what we have to offer and how we can help you in a structured and organized step-by-step manner my name is brendan Lowe. i will talk to you guys later i'm gonna go get a coffee even though i probably don't need one as you can see <laughs> but i love it all right have a great day happy practicing <laughs>